dead fish in the water, sulfur smell, weird coloration in the water in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, right where the supervolcano Campi Fligrii is, right where it stretches around 100 kilometers with all its craters, right where we see the epicenters of all these earthquake swarms that Campi Fligrii has seen during this Brady seismic crisis. And we just had a multiple days lasting, very intense earthquake swarm. I would say it lasted almost two weeks. And it really depends on how you define an earthquake swarm because for me it's still going because um, there's hardly any break but one good thing the number of earthquakes is getting a little bit less but what is this phenomenon that fishermen are reporting about because this is concerning is there something going on underwater we have seen two strong magnitude 3.9 earthquakes and one was in the water and we just had Another one where they reporting, and that is interesting, they're even, you know, more widely felt, even if they had the epicenter right at the Solfatara area. In Pozzuoli, there was, for example, just yesterday, a 2.3. That was felt in Naples. People heard it. They were, again, frightened by these shocks, and it was not only felt by the municipalities that are like inside this large Campi Flegri caldera, such as, for example, Quarto, Bacioli, and Puzzoli, but also, again, in the western areas of Naples between Bagnoli and Fuori Grotta. That's two neighborhoods that are located right inside the eastern side of the Fligrian caldera of Campi Fligri, the burning fields. And I have just heard that a few Western areas of Naples, they want to be included in this map of Brady seism because they are probably also going to be affected very, very highly by this. These are the neighborhoods of Pianura and Socavo in Naples. And then after that shock, they had three more shocks in the two range that was also felt heavily by the population. And the thing is, you see that picture here of the tremors very shortly, one after the other. So that also led to a constant rumbling again. So after this, how the scientists say intense and long seismic swarm that has really been lasting over the last few days. The earth is shaking again more intensely with these stronger earthquakes. And don't forget, this is a volcano, so anything above two is significant. We're not talking about that this volcano will produce magnitude 6.9, 7 point something earthquakes. It's not likely. The volcano could produce something like 5.1, 5 point something. I've reported in my last video that there is beef between the scientists because, you know, leading scientists from the civil protection say, well, we're not prepared seismically at all in this area. So if there is a 5.0, everything basically doomsday will collapse and many people will be lost. Of course, the last two days, all these earthquakes were heavily felt um, in Pozzuoli, where the epicenter is of these seismic events. So what are the fishermen reporting? That is a little bit strange because, I you know, we don't have any scientific explanation for that yet. No scientists have said this is true or it's not true. But honestly, the fishermen, they're out there every day. So I trust them if they tell me that something's off. They know the waters and the fish. Uh, like the, we say a German, it's a German saying, like the pocket of their own jacket. So the observation that the fishermen have made, and it was also published um, by a local newspaper, the fishermen that are going out in the Gulf of Pozzuoli, so that is this area that basically Campi Fligri also is rumbling and has craters underwater. They just found another crater underwater there. Um, they said there's an increase in water discoloration in the recent days. So what is going on? What is causing this? And they say they have seen lumps floating to the water surface. Is this like bubbles? sulfurous lumps. So are there any new fumaroles that have formed 
because of this earthquake swarm, maybe, that has been rumbling there, making the rocks brittle, giving way for these sulfur gases to come out. Because what they're describing sounds like something like this. And they also report that they smell a very, very strong smell of hydrogen sulfide. And not only in the water, the people that are living in Pozzoli and there are near the caldera, the Solfatara, the Pischiarelli area, where we see these fumaroles, they say it's, it's getting intense. You really smell it a lot. So it is possible that an increase in sulfurous fluids um, has been released on the seabed, into the seabed. But right now, we don't know. We have no confirmation what it really is. But I think with logical thinking, we, we can figure it out. And if you look at this picture here, this is a picture of underwater fumaroles of the Colombo volcano in Greece that is very, very close to Santorini. And this Colombo is bubbling has these underwater fumaroles and something similar is probably happening um, here as well in Campi Fligri. And they do have underwater measuring stations in place. They had, I've reported about this in the summer, they had problems because boats were basically ripping them apart, like throwing their anchors or somehow, I don't know, with their keels, or there was the suspicion that people intentionally were lifting them up or ripping them out because they had some boys on the water surface that indicate where the measuring instruments are and they're probably tied to these boys. So as a boater, why do you drive against this and get entangled in that rope and, and are destroying them? There were also some reports that seismic instruments on land have been vandalized, batteries were stolen. So this is pretty stupid. If you damage the equipment, that could, if shizzy hits the fizzy, give you a warning to escape and save yourself. But these people don't seem to have enough brain and only think short term, either like just want to vandalize it or want to make money with these batteries. Let's get quickly get back to what the fishermen are saying, because not only do we have this dead fish problem, the yellow stains and the sulfur that is showing up in the sea, but also submerged part, ancient parts of the city are resurfacing because of that radiceism. The land is rising, so the water level appears to drop, but the land is rising, right? So we have this in part of the ports that you see along the seawalls, that there's grass growing, that there's no water anymore. And also the fishermen right now, they're saying, well, they have to wait for high tide now in order to get out with their boats from Pozzoli, which wasn't the case before that Brady seismic crisis. So we're hearing from Mario Luciniano, He's 50 years old and he's a fisherman from Pozzoli and uh, he has given an interview in a local newspaper and he's going out basically every day with his fishing boat to fish. So, And he's been doing this for many, many years, for decades. So that's why his observation is so important and he knows the waters. And he says that especially since last year, since May 2024, May 20th, when there was this 4.4 magnitude earthquake and the land rise had accelerated. He says that's when his life changed significantly and that of many other colleagues as well. And he says in this interview, he says, when these earthquakes occur and you're on the water, you're at sea, you can hear explosions. You hear explosions at, as if there were, were like, in war, bombers throwing bombs. He says it's a strange, very impressive, intense sensation that you feel there. And he says, you're afraid that an explosion could happen at any moment. That's how it feels when you're on the water. And he says, every time when there's a major earthquake and when there's this major tremor that has a magnitude greater than three, like the one that they just had last Sunday, like a week ago, he says the boat, or it, it, it feels as if his boat is losing the balance. 
And he also says, you can hear a thud underneath, like a dull sound underneath the water. That must be frightening, like an underwater monster. And he says, and then the strange thing is that afterwards there's just pure silence. And then you see the birds flying. The birds are flying. They're leaving. And he says, I have been at sea in this area for 37 years, and I have never seen a situation like this before. And that's interesting because there was a Brady seismic crisis in the 1980s. And he says that he has experienced tremors in his fishing career um, while he was off the coast of Lucrino, for example, in the ex sofer area and in front of the Lido Augusto. And he says, yeah, it was each time an experience that I have never forgotten. You hear the bang, you stay still, and the first thought makes you fear an even stronger explosion or an eruption. And you think, do you want to see something explode from below? Are you going to see that? He says you feel helpless. You don't know what to do, especially when you're out on the boat alone. It's a situation you can never get used to. But he says what is happening right now, he has never experienced before. So this is definitely new. And, and you see that picture here where he shows all the fishing boats in the port where you see that the water has, has lowered. You see that there's grass growing. And, and you know, it's his daily life. He goes out to sea to fish and, and to sell the fish on the market. And he says now that for some years now, he has been forced to wait for the high tide to leave his port because it's almost dried up by the rising ground. And then he shows us this. The water used to go up to these, these uh, rocks that are there on the seawall. And he says, quote, I have to wait for the high tide to go out with the boat. And that's almost for two years now. Before we could go out at any time, there are only two of us fishermen left right now. The other boats cannot go out at all because they have a high keel that hits the seabed, which is so low right now because the ground is rising underneath. And then there's another thing that we need to talk about, which is also strange. And you have many of you have asked me in the comments, uh, when we were talking about Santorini and what's going on there with this magma intrusion, you were asking, is the water heating up? And Mario says there are changes in the sea and also changes to the water temperature. But also, and that is very, very interesting, um, there's a submerged city that continues to resurface because the ground is swelling and the water, because of the swelling, is receding. It's not that the water is actively receding, but it looks like because the swelling is so so big. And he says you can see that it's rising. It's It's amazing. And he says you can see remains of that that you weren't able to see before. And now... He talks about the, the water temperature, but also about the dead fish. And he says the temperature off the water and in the areas where there is now a depth of no more than 20 meters um, is higher. And the fish often come into the net, he says, already cooked. I don't know if he really means that, but then there would have to be really, really hot fumaroles like, like we see outside in the Solfatara that have 97 degrees Celsius. So yeah, if the fish swims into that, uh, it's so he says you, you're forced to throw them away because they cannot be eaten or sold. So they're dead and they're all, it seems like if you cut them open, they're partly cooked. So that's, is, he says, that's perhaps due to the opening of small craters um, that are especially noticeable in this area at Punto Epitaphio. He says, where I often see like yellow patches of sulfur with lots of bubbles coming out from the ground. So fumaroles, they're cooking the fish and it comes up ready to eat. No, I'm laughing, but that's kind of crazy. And he says, lately I have seen them become larger, bigger. And he says, especially when the water is clear, you can see them come up. There's definitely changes in the system. It's getting hotter, it's getting warmer. So the population is heavily concerned already and, and we don't blame the population by this 
massive earthquake swarm. We will have to wait and see. I'll show you a list of the most recent earthquakes that have just happened at Campi Fligri. I, I am now starting to put that at the end of the video because usually if I record this at the start of the video, normally earthquakes happen while I'm speaking. So um, that's why I'm putting it at the end. Yeah, so you see, the last one is Vesuvius, interestingly. So we haven't seen too much of Vesuvius during this heavy earthquake swarm. But also we see 1.0, 2.0. Oh, there's Vesuvius again. And then we see the Campi Fligre with a 2.1 and a 2.3. But that was yesterday already. And it was not too many per day, but usually over the last one and a half years, if we've seen something like this in one day, for us, that was an earthquake swarm. And it was like, whoa, a 2.3. It was just that during that swarm, and it was just on the 19th, a 3.1, a 3.0, and here another 3.0, right? That was, of course, something so close after each other. But here's the 2.3. Let's see where the epicenter is, where everyone said it was shaking them and they really felt it. Shallow depth at only two kilometers, and that explains why they felt it quite intense. And the epicenter, you see there's the Solfatara, the Pischiarelli area, so this is the epicenter and should there be a volcanic eruption, which they say they don't expect right now, it would probably be in this area. And there's the port of Pozzuoli where the fishermen are driving out. So this is the gulf here that the fishermen are talking about. And we know there's measuring stations here. So this is where they see discolored waters, where they smell the sulfur and where they find dead fish. So they have to die off something if there's a lot of dead fish. So something has disturbed them probably. And I've reported about this that um, at Santorini, all of a sudden they realized over 70% of the fish have gone. They have moved somewhere else, maybe because of this magma intrusion and the earthquakes. So maybe something similar here, but we have dead fish. So they see the fish, they know where they are. So maybe the sulfur concentration and the discoloration in the water, definitely something's going on. And hopefully we will learn more in the coming days. I have made so many interesting videos about Campi Fligri in the last few days. You should really check them out. Um, especially what the officials are saying and how the scientists are fighting with each other because they are accusing the officials of not really telling the truth about the danger level. And it's very, very interesting. I'll put these in the end screen and it's rumbling everywhere, guys. Uh, it's kind of crazy. So you should really subscribe so that you can be on the pulse with me. And if you'd like to support the channel, support the channel as a member. I'm releasing behind the scenes videos and personal stuff so that you learn more about that. Um, the link is in the description of this video. And if you want to support me with buying me coffees, I've got this buymeacoffee.com slash silky site. There you can support me as well. The link is also in the description. So thank you so much for doing that, guys. Also for the supers that you're giving me here on YouTube. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. And stay safe wherever you are. And good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you are, or something in the middle, because I have quite a few night owls where I know you'll be up and it's either good night or good morning for you then. So love you all. I see you very soon, guys. Bye-bye.